So once you're ready, we will start in our child's pose. Big toes together, knees nice and wide to start. Press your hips back towards your heels and then bring your forehead down and stretch your arms away from you. So you have that opposition here of your hips pressing back but your arms reaching away to lengthen your body. And child's pose, remember, is a resting pose that you can come back to at any point in the practice, right? Whenever you need to take a break, don't be afraid to skip anything I'm saying and come back to child's pose or modify as you need as we go. Start to connect your ujjayi pranayama. You're breathing in and out through the nose, slightly constricting the back of your throat so you can start to hear the sound of your breath. And you're working on making those inhales and exhales even longer because your breath sets the pace of the practice. So you're moving with your breath throughout the yoga poses and the transitions. Walk your hands to the right edge of your mat and place your left hand right on top of that right hand. Should just be a nice little gentle stretch through the left side of your body. And then take it the other way. Walk your hands to the left and place the right hand on top of your left. Right, let's bring it to center to a tabletop position to your hands and knees. Inhale, drop the belly, arch your back and gaze up for cow pose. And then as you exhale, tuck your chin in and round your back for cat. So we're warming up the spine here. Inhale as you arch. Exhale as you round. One more time. Inhale to arch. Exhale to round. Good. After your last one, find a neutral spine. Thread the needle. Take your right arm. Lift it up first. And then thread it all the way through, putting your head down and starting to walk that left hand forward towards the top of the mat, maybe crawling it a little bit towards the right side, beginning to open up your shoulders and your upper back and noticing how it's feeling at the beginning of our practice. Come back to tabletop, reset, and switch sides. Take your left arm, peel it up. Thread it through, putting your head down, walking the right hand forward, maybe crawling it a little bit to the left side. Then okay, come back to tabletop again, reset on your hands and knees. Opposite arm and leg, right arm reaches forward, left leg extends back. Flex your foot, use your core, find your balance here. And then as you exhale, bring your knee and elbow into touch or just as close as you can get them. Inhale to extend and reach. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. One more time. Exhale, knee to elbow. And then inhale, you can extend and just hold, working on your balance or bend your leg and maybe add the back bend, right hand to left foot and try to kick it back. Then we stretch it back out and place it down. Switching sides, left arm, right leg. Get your balance first. Exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend it out. Good, exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale, extend. One more time, knee to elbow. Then you can extend it and hold it or bend the leg and add the back bend on this side, kicking it back. Stretch it out, place it down, and then we'll move into our first down dog. So plant your hands shoulder width, tuck your toes and lift your hips up. And then bend one leg at a time. Walk out your downward facing dog, stretch your calves, your hamstrings, maybe bend one elbow at a time, any movement that feels good to you until you're ready to kind of settle into that first down dog. Shrugging the shoulders away from the ears, pressing the chest back, working your heels towards the floor. They're probably not gonna touch yet, that's okay. Inhale, glide forward to a high plank. Just hold your high plank, shoulders, elbows, wrists stacked, feet are still hips width, your body's in a nice straight line. And then you keep your hands and feet there, but exhale, lift your hips and push back down dog. Inhale, glide forward, high plank position. Exhale, lift your hips, down dog. 
Good, one more time. Inhale forward, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Walk your feet to the front, take a few steps, rag doll. Beat hips width, bend your knees a lot, grab opposite elbows. Maybe shake your head, yes, no, relaxing your neck. You can sway a little bit side to side, shifting the body weight from the right foot to the left foot. Or you can also sway forward and back, shifting from the balls of the feet to the heels. Really just letting yourself hang heavy, relaxing the neck, getting that nice stretch in your lower back. And then release your hands, roll yourself all the way up to stand. When you get to the top, take your arms, lift them all the way up. Your right hand is gonna grab a hold of your left wrist and pull it to the right for a standing side body stretch. And then switch your left hand, grab your right wrist, pull it to the left side. Back to center. Interlace the fingers behind your lower back. If they don't reach, this is where you can grab onto a yoga strap or a towel and hold them there. You could also bend your arms a little more to make your hands touch if you need to. Inhale, look up, open your chest. As you exhale, bend your knees a little bit, start to fold forward, keeping the hands interlaced. So you're getting that chest, shoulder opening, as well as a little stretch for the backs of the legs, but the knees are still slightly bent. Good, release the clasp of your hands. Inhale to a flat back. We're gonna cross our feet now. So you're gonna take your right foot and place it directly behind the left foot. So your left leg is crossed in front, right? Your feet are crossed here. And then from there, you try to fold forward with that left leg crossed in front. If your hands don't reach the floor, you can put them on blocks. You can bend the knees if you need to. If your legs are pretty straight and this feels good and you want a little bit more, try walking your hands to the left edge of your mat, like a little semicircle over to the left edge. Walk your hands to center and then switch your feet. So now your right foot is gonna be crossed directly in front. Your right foot's in front of your left. You can fold directly over the legs or you can try walking it to the right side this time. Hands coming to the right edge of your mat. Good, back to center, uncross the feet, bring them to touch. Inhale, lengthen your spine, fingertips either on the shins or the floor. As you exhale, step back to plank. First chaturanga, we'll bring the knees down, hug your elbows in and slowly lower to the ground for a modified chaturanga. Untuck your toes, inhale to cobra pose, lifting the chest, just a small back bend, and then exhale back down. Good, push up to your knees to that modified plank position, then retuck your toes and meet in your down dog. So when we flow through our sun salutations in a few minutes, just keep in mind that you can always do that version on the knees. But first, from our down dog, lift your right leg up, open the hip, bend the leg. Just give a nice stretch. Maybe draw a couple of circles with the ankle in both directions. Maybe move the whole leg, making a few circles. Then take your right leg, step your right foot forward, low lunge. Drop your left knee on the ground. Make sure your right knee's over your ankle, and then you can bring your hands up to your right thigh. You're sinking into this left hip flexor. From here, try to interlace your fingers again behind your lower back. So we're gonna be doing this clasp a lot today. So again, if you need that strap, you can grab a strap. Now slide the hands down the hamstring as you look up towards the ceiling. So you're adding a little back bend and that chest opening as you're in this low lunge. Good, unclasp the hands, bring them down to the floor or your blocks, half splits, straightening the right leg flexing the right foot, and then folding over the right leg. Rebend the leg just to put your hands down and step back to down dog. No chaturanga, just go straight back to your down dog. And then we'll switch sides, lift the left leg up, open the hip and bend the leg. And get a nice stretch there. Maybe again, draw some circles with the ankle both directions. Maybe draw circles with the entire leg, making some space in your hip. And take a really big step forward with that left foot, low lunge. Drop your back knee down, adjust the foot so you can get your knee over your ankle. 
and then start with your hands on the left thigh to sink into that lunge. Now notice if you always tend to interlace your fingers with one thumb on top, right? Switch it, do it the awkward way. Lace your hands the other way behind your lower back and then slide the clasp of your hands down the back of your right leg as you lift your chest up. Release the clasp of your hands, bring your hands to the floor for your half splits, straightening the left leg, flexing the foot as best you can, and folding over that left leg. Rebend the leg, bring your hands down, step to your downward facing dog. Auto Mukhashvanasana. Take a deep breath, reset in your down dog. Then as you look forward, you can either step or hop both feet up to meet your hands. Feet together, inhale, lengthen to a flat back, exhale, forward fold. Use your flat back, now inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands come to heart center, meeting in our mountain pose. So we'll begin our sun salutation A, Surya Namaskara A. Remember, take any modifications that you need as we go through these. We're going to do it three times today. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, you can step or hop back, meeting in your chaturanga from the toes or the knees. Low push up. Inhale, up dog, or you can stay on your belly for cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Then we look forward and we hop or step right back to the front, feet together. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reverse swan down up. Exhale, hands to heart center. So that was once, two more times. Inhale, reach the arms back up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step or hop, chaturanga. Good, inhale to your back bend of choice, up dog or cobra. And then exhale, you meet in your down dog. Look towards your hands, lightly hop or step to the front, feet together. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive up. Exhale, hands come back to heart center. Take a deep breath. Every time you get to mountain pose, you reset. One more sun A. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, swan dive down. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, you hop or step to your chaturanga, hugging those elbows in. Inhale to your back bend, up dog or cobra. Exhale, you always meet in down dog. And you just take one deep breath. We don't stay in down dog for long. We look forward and hop or step back to the front. Inhale, lengthen, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive up. Exhale, hands to heart center. Our sun B, our sun salutation B, we're only gonna do it once. Surya Namaskar B, right? This is much longer than our sun A. So from your mountain pose, lift your arms up, bend your legs, chair pose, Utkatasana, knees and feet together. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, chair flat back. Exhale, hop or step, Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. This time from your down dog, you lift your right leg up with a square hip and a straight leg. Then step your right foot between your hands, pivot your left heel down for warrior one. Virabhadrasana A, squaring your hips, arms straight up to the ceiling. Back heel is flat on the ground, back leg is straight, but you're bending the right leg. Exhale the hands to the floor, step back to your chaturanga. Remember, you can modify if you need to. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Then we do the other side. Lift the left leg up with that straight leg, square hip. Take a big step forward. Pivot your right heel flat on the ground and turn it in. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana A, squaring the hips, arms up, just checking with your form for a breath. Then you exhale your hands to the ground, step back, chaturanga, low push up. 
Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Looking towards your hands, hopping or stepping, both feet to the front, feet together. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, Utkatasana, chair pose. And then press all the way up to stand, hands to heart center, mountain pose. Good, take a deep breath, reset. You should feel nice and warmed up. Inhale, your arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, swan dive down. And then separate your feet about hips width distance. Pada Gustasana, your peace fingers, your first two fingers, they're gonna hook onto your big toes. Then inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Relax your neck, let your elbows go out to the side. If you can, try to straighten the legs, right? If your hamstrings are still feeling tight and it's hard to grab your big toes, then put a little bend in the knees. Good, releasing the toes. Inhale to your flat back again. And exhale, step back, chaturanga. Low push up, halfway down. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lift your right leg up, step it forward, back to your warrior one. So just like we were doing in that sun B, set up your feet and lift your arms up for Virabhadrasana A, warrior one. Make sure you're really grounded through that back foot. Square your hips. Interlace your fingers behind your lower back. Again, we're doing this chest and shoulder opening a lot today. Inhale, look up and open your chest. As you exhale, we bow forward, humble warrior. Your right shoulder can go right on top of the right thigh or maybe even slightly to the inside of it, bringing your head closer to the ground. But keep it, your right shoulder close to your knee. If your head does touch the ground, it should be right next to your foot. Good, let's come back up to our warrior one. Lift your arms all the way back up, release that clasp of your hands. Bring your hands to prayer position at the center of your chest. Slowly lean forward, we're gonna come into a variation of warrior three by floating the left leg up, but we'll keep our hands in prayer position. Try to straighten your standing leg if you can. Flex your flying foot and square off that left hip. And just keep your hands in prayer. Focus your eyes. Get your balance here. Nice. Now hands come to the floor for standing splits. So as your hands come down, you're working your nose closer to the right leg and maybe lifting that left leg up higher, but without opening the hips. Hands can also be on blocks if they don't reach the floor. If you want to grab your ankle, take your right hand to the back of your right ankle and try to pull your nose closer to that right leg. Now, lower your leg a little bit. We're going to try to come back to warrior three. So come up to your fingertips, put a little bend in your right leg that will help and bring your hands back to prayer. Just take one breath, balancing there, and then step all the way back, warrior one. Virabhadrasana A, arms up. Then as you exhale, lower your hands to the floor. Chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Other side, lift your left leg up, step it forward. Starting in our warrior one, pivoting the back heel flat, square your hips and lift your arms up. Virabhadrasana A. Now, as you interlace, try to do it that awkward way with the other thumb on top, interlacing behind your back. Look up, open your chest, and bow forward. Humble warrior. Again, maybe put your shoulder right on top of the thigh or just slightly to the inside of it. Bending your front leg a lot to bring your head closer to the ground, but not letting your back heel come up, staying grounded through that back foot. And relax your neck, just let your head hang. Lift yourself all the way back up to your regular warrior one, arms up. Hands to prayer position. Take your time as you start to lean forward. Warrior three, floating the right leg up, flexing the foot, squaring the hips, trying to get your torso and leg in a straight line, making that T-shape with your body here. Nice, standing splits. Hands come to the floor or the blocks or maybe left hand to the back of the left ankle. Continuing to lift the right leg as high as you can while keeping the hips square and bringing your nose closer to your left leg.
Now, if that leg is up kind of high, lower it down a little bit. Come up to your fingertips first. Put a soft bend in the left knee and see if you can bring your hands back to prayer position. Taking one breath, balancing in warrior three, and then step it all the way back, warrior one, lifting the arms back up. Exhale your hands to the mat, chaturanga. You can modify or skip it. I know we've done a lot of chaturangas, right? Listen to your body. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Bring your knees to the floor for a moment. Tabletop. All right, we're gonna set up for dolphin pose. So come down to your elbows. I always like to double check and have you grab your triceps. That just helps you to make sure you put your elbows in the right spot, because that will lay your elbows on your shoulder, and then you extend your forearms. So your forearms should be parallel. Dolphin is just like down dog, but on your forearms. So palms flat, arms look like the number 11. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up, but keep your elbows down. You can let your head hang, but don't let your head touch the floor. So you're actively, pushing down into your elbows and forearms to push your head away from the floor. So that it's just kind of hanging here. There's no pressure on your head. Walk your feet together in the middle of your mat there. And then from here, you can stay here or try to lift your right leg up nice and high and just hold without opening the hip and hold five. You should feel some strength building in your shoulders here. Four, three, two, one, switch legs, put your right foot down, lift your left leg up and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, child's pose. This time in child's pose, try bringing your knees all the way together, forehead down, arms relax alongside you. So that way your shoulders can round forward and let them truly relax. Good tabletop position. Puppy pose is always a good stretch to do after dolphin to stretch our shoulders. So you're in tabletop, your hips stay over your knees, and then you walk your hands forward and think about melting your chest to the ground. Your butt stays up. So either the forehead might touch the ground, or maybe you can get your chin to the ground and think of chin and chest melting to the ground. So there's a big arch in your back, you're stretching into your shoulders and your lats here. And walk your hands in and we'll meet back in our downward facing dog. Reset there. Lift your right leg up. This time as you step your right foot forward, stay on the ball of your back foot for crescent lunge. Anjanasana. So the main difference in crescent lunge and warrior one is just that back foot, right? Our back heels off the ground or on the ball of the foot. Usually that means crescent lunge is a longer stance. And then what we had for our warrior one. Good. Open up your crescent to warrior two. Virabhadrasana B. Pivot your back heel flat so your back foot's parallel to the backage of the mat. Your arms are like a T and you should have a pretty deep bend in that right leg. Look at your right hand and flip the palm up. Inhale, reverse warrior. Reach backwards. And then as you exhale, bring it into a modified side angle. Right elbow to the thigh, left arm up. And then we're gonna take a half bind. Wrap your left arm behind your lower back. So your top arm, your left arm goes behind your back. It might be on your lower back or it might reach all the way through to this hip crease. My right elbow for now is still on my right thigh. So the left arm, the top arm. Um, Jacqueline, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, so you're trying to get this hand here as close to this thigh as you can. And then if it's okay on the neck, gaze up towards the ceiling. Now you can stay here a little longer or you could try a full bind. If you are holding the thigh, let go. Take this right arm now, go down and try to reach through and grab your left hand. So you're trying to see if you can clasp your hands by your hips. I just grab palm to palm. And then I work on rolling this left shoulder back and looking up. Nice. Undo whichever bind you have. Come up to your warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill your hands to the front. Step back, chaturanga, optional. If you want to modify, you can. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, back to your down dog. Lift your left leg up. Step it between your hands. 
Starting in our crescent lunge first. So you're on the ball of your back foot as you lift your arms up for that high crescent lunge. Squaring the hips, finding your balance here. Then open to warrior two. Pivot your back heel flat. Your hips, your chest are open to that side wall, but you're gazing at your left hand. You still have a really big bend in that left leg. Flip your left palm up. Inhale, reverse warrior. As you exhale, bring it to modified side angle, starting with the left elbow on the left side. And then we're going to take a few moments in the half bind. So you take your right arm behind your back and put up maybe on your lower back. Maybe you can help wiggle it around to that thigh or hip crease. And if it's okay on the net, gaze up towards the shoulder. And think of rolling that right shoulder back, rotating your chest open. And you might find one side is different, right? That's normal for me. The right shoulder is always a little tighter than the left. You can stay here. You don't have to force the full bind. If you want to stay here, stay here. If you want to do the full bind, take your left arm down under your leg. Try to find that right hand. Grab hands by your hip or your hamstring. And then try to roll that right shoulder back again and rotate the chest open. Undo whichever bind you have and make your way back up to warrior two. Open the arms out. Nice. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, windmill your hands to the front. Step your way back, chaturanga, low push up. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Lift your right leg up, lizard pose. Step your right foot outside your right hand and drop your back knee down. So untuck your back toes. You're in a wide lunge here. Right knees over the ankle, all five toes pointing forward. Hands or elbows, or if you have yoga blocks, whatever you can reach to get as low as you can here on the inside of that foot. Stretching into your hip, let your arms and legs relax and just create some space here. Take a couple more deep breaths here. And then press up to your hands. Just go to down dog. No chaturanga. Just step back to down dog to reset. And then in your own time, we'll switch sides by lifting the left leg up, stepping it outside that left hand for lizard, dropping your right knee down. Again, left knee is over the ankle. All five toes are pointing straight forward. And then either hands, blocks, or elbows, whatever you need here to get low and stretch into that left hip. Take a few more deep breaths on this side. And then to come out of it, you come up to your hands. And again, we're going to meet back in our downward facing dog. Then look forward, step or hop both feet back to the front. This time you can just slowly roll yourself up to stand. Once you get up to stand, turn to face one side and open up your feet nice and wide, maybe four or five feet apart for your straddle forward fold. But we're gonna go for that same chest shoulder opening that we've been doing. So interlace the fingers behind your back or hold your strap, look up and open your chest and then fold forward with the hands interlaced. Drop your head, relax your neck. Don't worry if your head doesn't touch the floor, just let it hang. And then you get that stretch again in your shoulders and chest and the backs of the legs. And hopefully as this practice is on, going on, right, and we've done this interlace quite a few times, maybe it starts to feel a little more open, right? Maybe at the beginning, your hands were a little closer to your lower back, and maybe now that it's a little more open, you can move them a little further away from your lower back. Good, release the clasp of the hands, then just walk your hands now through the middle to fold deeper.
Walk both hands to the left leg, grab your ankle or calf on the left side and pull your nose closer to the left leg. And then go the other way, walk it to the right leg, pull your nose closer to the right leg. Come back to center, find a flat back, put a little bend in both knees, hands to hips, and take your time, slowly stand up. Good, we're gonna step to the front. Today, we're gonna work on a different balancing pose called Eagle Garudasana. So I just step back so that hopefully you can see me better. Bring your feet together and bend your knees a little bit, kind of like a chair, but not quite. Take your right leg, cross it over the left. Squeeze your legs together and keep both knees bent. Even your standing leg is bent. Some people like to put the toe on the floor for balance. Some just do a single wrap. Some can get their foot all the way behind their calf for that double wrap. Okay, so squeeze your inner thighs. Now, once you've got your legs set up, arms out like a T. We're gonna do the same thing with the arms. But your right leg's on top, your right arm's gonna go on bottom. So cross your arms, right arm on bottom, and maybe just give yourself a hug and hold your shoulder blades. Or you can wrap and try to get the backs of the hands to touch or double wrap and get your palms to touch. Lift your elbows up and away from you. Push your forearms and elbows away from you so you feel your shoulder blades pull apart. And just focus your eyes, try to find your balance, right? There's a lot going on. We've got a bind in the arms and in the legs. If you feel good here, you can slowly one inch at a time, maybe bring your elbows just to lightly tap your knees. Nice, if you do go down, you take your time, you come back up, you take a breath at the top, and then we'll all release and shake it out. And we'll try the other side. And sometimes it just depends on the day, right? Every day our balance is a little bit different. Start with your feet together, bend your knees, left leg on top. Maybe put the toe on the floor to help you balance. Maybe single wrap, maybe you can get that double wrap. Then arms opposite of the legs, left arm on bottom, hugging the shoulder blades, or backs of the hands or palms together. Lift your elbows up an inch and push them away from you. Again, feel the shoulder blades pull apart. Feel that stretch in your upper back. You can stay upright like this, working on the balance here, or you can slowly crunch it forward, bringing the elbows to just barely tap the knees, but not really resting there. And then slowly, same thing, you reverse it. If you go down, you come back up, you hold it at the top for a second, and then we release and shake it out. Good, if you're not at the top of the mat, we'll meet back in our mountain pose at the top of the mat. Hands to prayer, take a deep breath, reset. Inhale, reach arms up, exhale, swan dive down. Inhale to a flat back, and exhale, step to plank, we're gonna lower to the floor. So all the way down. So there's two variations of this next stretch. For the most part, I've been teaching in my classes the first few weeks, just arms straight. But because we've done a lot of shoulder chest opening, I'm gonna show you the other option today where we bend the arm. So right arm could be straight out to the side like a T. If your chest shoulder is feeling really tight today, you're gonna to keep it straight. If not, you're gonna bend it like this, 90 degrees, cactus arm. So that when you look over at it, your elbows in line with your shoulder, you have this 90 degree angle, and then you put your right ear on the floor. Pushing into your left hand, you roll to the right side of your body, stacking the feet. And you have that cactus arm, right? Then from there, if you want to add on, bend your left leg, put it on the floor behind you like a kickstand. So having the arm bent should give you a deeper stretch in the right shoulder and chest. If it's too intense or too much, go back to the straight right arm where your right arm is just out to the side like a T and you'll still get that same stretch. Good, back to center, and we'll take it to the other side. So left arm straight out to the side like a T, or cactus your arms at 90 degree angle, elbow in line with shoulder. Left ear down, push into the right hand and roll down to the left side of the body, stacking the feet or taking that right foot on the floor behind you to help you twist a little deeper here. Again, whether the arm is straight or bent, you should mostly feel it in that left shoulder, and left side of your chest. Try to relax your neck and keep your head on the ground if you can.
Good. Let's bring everything back to center. Forehead or chin down. Take your arms by your hips, palms facing down. Squeeze your legs as close together as you can. If they come a little bit apart, that's okay. And we'll lift up here for our first back bend. So lift your chest, your legs, your arms, engaging everything to lift off the floor, keeping your neck long, gazing down for five, four, good, three, two, one. Then you release, bring one ear down, relax everything. Now you can repeat that or you can add on by interlacing the hands. Again, we've done this clasp of the hands a lot today. Locust pose, you lift everything back up and you try to lift your hands away from your tailbone if they're interlaced. And hold, five, four, three, two, one. When you release, let everything go and bring your other ear down. Now we're just gonna do one more back bend, either one of those two or bow pose, Dhanurasana, bending the legs, reaching around, go for the outside of the ankles if you're going for bow. Flex your feet and then kick through your shins to lift your chest up. If full bow doesn't work and you wanna do one leg at a time, you could also do half bow. Or again, any of the other back bends we already did. Take five more deep breaths, four, try to really kick through those legs, three, Two, one. When you release, let go. Keep your legs bent and just windshield wipe for your shins from one side to the other to gently release your lower back. And then when you're ready, we'll push all the way back to a child's pose. Either version of child's pose with the knees together or the knees wide, resetting your spine. And meeting in our downward facing dog. And we'll set up for half pigeon or one leg pigeon. So lift the right leg up, open the hip bend the leg like we did earlier. But then you're gonna keep that right knee bent as you sweep it forward. Put your right knee behind your right wrist and slide your left leg back. So the right leg is bent, your left leg is straight. Your knee is in line with your hip. You're making sure you're not actually sitting on the right foot. And then you fold forward over that right leg. You can use a block under the hip or the forehead if you need it. If at any point pigeon bothers your knee, you can lay on your back and modify with a lying down number four. If you start to get all the way to the floor in your pigeon and you're ready for a deeper stretch, then you can start to move your shin further away, maybe a couple inches, maybe at most the furthest you would go is shin parallel to the front with this leg bent 90 degrees, but you have to still be able to keep the hips square and you flex the foot. But again, if that doesn't feel good, keep your foot closer to you. You'll still get the same hip stretch. Just relax here, right? We're starting to cool things down. Let your upper body relax, breathe, create space in your hips using deep breaths. Walk your hands in. We'll go back to that three-legged dog. Maybe shake your right leg out, open it up again, move it around. And then when you're ready, just meeting in down dog to reset. Switching sides, lifting the left leg up, open the hip and the leg, and bring that left knee forward for your half pigeon. Sliding that right leg back, squaring your hips, knee in line with the hip, maybe keeping that foot close to you, maybe moving it more forward, right? Or if on this side at any point it bothers your knee, you lay on your back here lying down number four. Again, if your hip's off the floor, you can take a block and just kind of like wedge it under there. Or if your forehead doesn't reach the ground, that's also a good place for like a block or a pillow. You can put something under your forehead or even just make fists and rest your forehead on fists. So that way you can relax your neck because ideally we want our head down touching something so we don't have to strain to hold ourselves up here and we can truly relax into the stretch.
Start to walk your hands in. We'll go into our final down dog. So again, you can shake out that last leg, move it around. And when you're ready, we'll meet in our very last down dog of today's practice. Noticing how it feels compared to the beginning of your practice to your first down dog. Maybe compress the heels a little closer to the ground. And we'll step to the front, have a seat. And extend both legs straight out in front of you. Feet flex, sitting up nice and tall. Pashimottanasana, seated forward fold. If you can't reach and you have that strap handy, you can put your strap around your feet. Or you can hold your legs, your feet, whatever you can reach there as you fold. Keeping your feet flexed, getting that stretch to the backs of your legs, but also your lower back. Slowly come up, roll yourself all the way onto your back, hugging your knees in, giving a little rock side to side. And then we'll place the feet on the floor, open your arms out to the side like a T. Cross your right leg over your left, move your hips an inch or two to the right, and then drop your knees to the left. So it's a cross leg version of our spinal twist. The right leg is crossed over the left, but your knees are dropping to the left. If it feels okay on the neck, turn your head and look the opposite way towards that right hand. Bring your legs through center. Let's switch the cross of the legs. Left leg crosses over the right, move your hips an inch or two to the left, and then drop your knees to the right side. Maybe turning the gaze to the left, taking that variation of spinal twist on this side. Our last pose before our Shavasana. And we'll bring everything back to center, uncross the legs, wrap your arms around your shins, curl yourself up into a nice tight little ball, bringing your forehead up to your knees, giving yourself a big hug, and then letting it all go, coming into Shavasana, our final relaxation. Extending the legs out long, letting the feet fall open. Arms relax alongside you, palms facing up, and try to shrug your shoulders down away from your ears to keep your neck long. As you close your eyes, clear away any last remaining thoughts. Taking a nice deep inhale through your nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth, letting it go, letting your muscles relax deeper into the floor. Slowly begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes. Start to bring some small movements back into your body. 
Maybe drawing a couple circles with the wrists and ankles, moving them in both directions. Maybe gently moving your head a little bit side to side. Anything that feels good to you. And then when you feel ready, reach the arms overhead, reach the legs long, create that nice full body stretch, getting as tall as you can. And with the eyes closed, hugging your knees into your chest, rolling over to one side, coming into a fetal position. And then using the hands to press you all the way up to a comfortable seated position. Crossing the legs, sitting up tall, hands come together at heart center, Anjali Mudra, and take a couple last deep breaths, scanning your body, noticing how it feels after today's yoga practice. Take one more nice deep inhale through your nose. Exhale all the air out the mouth, letting it go. <sighs> Lifting your hands to your forehead, your third eye center, and bowing forward. Namaste.